Okay, so next I want to practice one more complex join and try and put all of this together. Some of you may still be struggling with how to understand which tables you'll need depending on the data uh, you want to get. So here's what I want to do. Let's take a look back at the ERD for the uh, sales order uh, sales LT database. So we have addresses which are connected to customers with a linking table in between because a customer can have more than one address. So it's many to many from address to customer, which is why we have this table. Customers connected to sales order header, which says here's the data was purchased, here's the total due, here's whether or not it's been shipped. Sales order header has many sales order details. So these are the line items on the receipt. Each receipt refers to a product over here in the products table. The product table uh, belongs to or has a product description. Um, and that description, let's see, uh, has a description detail over here. You know, that's a little too far. Let's do this. Let's pull up a, uh, let's pull up a category like, uh, right here. Let's pull up a category name and let's find all addresses who purchase a particular category that lets us connect from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tables. So let's pick, um, let's pull this in. Resize this really quick here. And let's see what we've got in address and then in category. All right, so here's addresses. So let's find um, Washington. So we've got state province here. We want any instance of, um, well, you know what we can do is let's, let's do a count. We'll make this an aggregate function. So let's count up all instances of product category. Let's see, edit data. Let's find a certain category being purchased from a Washington address. All right, parent category, category name. Here we go, um, breaks. How many times were breaks uh, shipped to Washington? That's the, that's the query we want, we want to run. So let's return, select. Uh, we want um, name of the category. We want the state province. And we want a count. Uh, no, not count, sum, because we have to sum up quantity purchased. Uh, I'm not sure if it's quantity. It would be in sales order detail. So I guess technically we're getting a field from three different tables. So what is quantity called here? Order quantity. That's what we want. Okay. So it's order quantity. Okay. Here's the fun part, the from statement, because these three tables aren't necessarily connected. What we have to understand is that it's how to get from one table to another. We have to connect all these tables entirely following the primary key, foreign key relationships that are already set up in the, by, by, um, by the fact that we have an address ID here and address ID is a foreign key here. We call this the primary key foreign key relationship. Customer ID here matches up with customer ID there. Uh, customer ID here matches up with customer ID there. Sales order ID to sales order ID. Sales, uh, no, product ID to product ID. Then product category ID to product category ID. And there's name. So we're only selecting name, a sum of quantity, order quantity, and then state province. But we have to make those join statements from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. That's the idea. So it doesn't matter actually necessarily what order I make those joins in or where I begin. I just have to know that I need to connect those seven, eight tables, however many it was, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't matter where I begin with my from statement. So I'm simply going to start with, uh, Let's start with state province, just because we're reading from left to right, but that's all. I'm going left to right, top to bottom, from here over there. But it really doesn't matter what, what order I do it in. So I need address, and I'm going to do all inner joins, because I need only those where the state province name matches up with that category name. So I don't want any left joins or right joins, because I don't want to have any instant, because that will give me records that don't match up from one table to another, possibly, and I don't want those. So typically, especially with analytics, I'm almost always going to be using inner joins. Inner join, um, let's see, was it customer address? Customer address. Inner join, customer 
address. Oh, but hey, first of all, sales lt dot address. I got to remember my full table name. Sales lt dot customer address on. And again, this order doesn't matter e either. Sales lt dot address dot address ID equals sales lt dot customer address dot address ID. And join the next one. So now we've got address to customer address. Now let's go to customer. How do I know? Again, if you're struggling to remember, it's because I've got customer ID mapped to the customer table. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I can't, I can't do a join from customer address to sales order header because there's no primary key foreign key relationship between those two tables that matches up. So I have to go to customer first before I go to header. That's the idea. Okay. So sales LT dot customer on sales LT uh, dot customer dot customer ID equals sales LT dot uh, customer address dot customer ID. Enter join the next one. Whoops, not enter join. Enter join. So now let's go from sales order head or sorry from customer to sales order header. I got that right. Yep, that one, that one. Okay, perfect. Sales lt dot sales order header on sales lt dot sales order header equals sales lt dot customer table dot. Oh, I gotta remember my. Sorry, I'm forgetting customer ID, my primary key. I've got the table name, but I got to make sure I give it what the, this is a foreign key. This is a primary key. This is a foreign key. This is a primary key. So notice I don't have to have foreign key first or primary key second. The order doesn't matter. I can go either way. I've gone both ways here with, especially yeah, particularly with inner joins. It doesn't matter with left joins or right joins. It does matter because then you're telling, you're stating one tables on the left ones on the right. There's a particular one you want the extra rows from inner join. It doesn't matter at all. Okay, so we've got to the sales order header. Now we better get to sales order detail. Sales LT dot sales order detail on sales LT dot sales uh, order detail dot sales order ID equals sales LT dot sales order header dot sales order ID. Now, how do I know it's sales order ID? Because that's the primary key of the sales order table that you can find up here as a foreign key in the sales order detail header. So I'm connecting it from address ID to address ID, then customer ID to customer ID, then customer ID to this customer ID. Now I'm going sales order ID to sales order ID. So next we want to go not sales order detail because that's not found in, in the product table. Product table has a one to many relationship going this way. So it's actually product ID to product ID. Okay, so that's what we do next. Enter join sales lt dot product dot oh nope on sales lt dot product dot product id equals sales lt dot sales order detail dot product id. Okay, now we're over here to this table. Now we want to go to category. So here it's going to be product id. What's over here? Not product id because this is a one-to-many relationship. A category has many products, not the other way around. So I want to go cat product category ID to product category ID. No problem. Enter join sales LT dot product uh, category on sales LT dot product dot product category ID equals sales LT dot product category dot product category ID. Okay. Now I've connected all the way through. Name has got a squiggly here because the word name is used multiple times. It says ambiguous column name. All these different tables I'm using, more than one of them have the column called name, but only one of them has state province and only one of them has order quantity. That's why these don't have the red squiggly. So all we got to do here is say, which name are we referring to? Is it a product name? No, it's a product category name. So I do table name, product category dot name. Okay. Now we need our where clauses where state province equals Washington uh, and we wanted the, a certain product right and uh, and we better specify which name we're referring to product category dot name equals I think I said breaks so we got our where clause in there now we need our group by 
to say we're going to group by product category dot name and by state province. So we're just going to get one record back with a sum order quantity. We can give that a name if we want to as total breaks in Washington or something like that if we want to. Anyway, let's run that see if I've got any typos. Oh, no breaks purchased in Washington. All right, let's pick something different then. Uh, how about we take um, category name out of the equation and let's just uh, let's just look at all everything you purchased in Washington. I forget that there's only a few orders in this in this uh, data set. Still nothing purchased in Washington. All right, we've got everything else here. Let's try a different state. Let's uh, let's take a look at one that we have actually. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at sales order detail. We got it right here. Here we've got a product ID. Maybe we have no breaks purchased. Let's see here. All right, let's uh, let's try. Let's see what product eight thirty six is. Eight thirty six is ML Road Frame W, which the category ID for that one is eighteen. So lots of eighteens. Let's do whatever eighteen is. So let's find out what eighteen is. Eighteen is road frames. All right, perfect. Let's just whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to our SQL and let's say we want I'm gonna undo that. So we want road frames, and maybe we still have nothing purchased in Washington. Apparently not. Let's find out what. Uh, <laughs> let's find out what um where these where, where this was shipped to. Sales order detail. Let's see. No order ID seven one seven seven four. So that means I got to go to pro order seven one seven seven four, which is sales order header. Seven one seven seven four. Let's see here. This first one is for customer two nine eight four seven. Customer two nine eight four seven. Oh, and I gotta go all the way in. Let me pull up all my customers. Two nine eight four seven right here, and there. Uh, oh, I should have gone straight to customer address. Two nine eight four seven. I'm going to pull out from this table. Let's see two nine. Okay, come on, give me a few more. Right here, eight four seven to address ten ninety two. Ten ninety two. Okay, let's find address ten ninety two. See now we get to go do this whole investigation. Ten ninety two. Right here, this is in California. All right, I should have just guessed California. So instead of Washington, we're now going to find road frames in California. Total run across all those. So basically, I just did, followed my way back and forth through these same primary key foreign keys that we just uh, connected. Now we get, there we go, 34 breaks ordered total. Sorry, 34 total road frames in California. So the purpose of this video is to try and help you understand how we join together tables or begin a query that requires data across multiple tables. We don't necessarily have to select something from every table, um, but if I need data that's not direct, if I need two data points that aren't in two tables that are directly connected via a primary, primary key foreign key pair, I have to go ahead and explicitly make all the joins uh, for every table between those two tables that eventually does connect all of them. That's the point of this video.